Dear parishioners of St. Aidan's, uh, I am here in my office at St. Aidan's and I wanted to do a series of explaining the Mass, similar to our Mass etiquette and, and instructions. So I wanted to go through the process of the Mass, the whole Mass, step by step, so to make one short video. And today I wanted to talk to you about how the priest prepares for Mass. So. In this office, we also have a sacristy, so a lot of my vestments are here, whereas some of the vestments are in the other sacristy behind the, the altar area, which is where the um, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion and the lectors get ready. As you can see, there is a mirror here, so you can probably see Roberto there, my cameraman. So, uh, yes, okay. So basically when it comes time to get ready for Mass, the idea is that the priest isn't rushing beforehand, so he should be recollected, he should be focused. And usually before Mass I try to hear confessions. If there's not too many people coming, I will pray my breviary uh, while I'm in the confessional, so I'm, I'm prayerfully getting ready for Mass. There is a prayer that um, priests sometimes say in preparation for Mass, and I can't, I, I'm not sure if I can remember it uh, from memory because when I'm under pressure like this, it's hard to, to remember. But I, I usually, in union with Mary, I make the intention of offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass according to the rite of the Holy Roman Church to make present the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of souls, especially for, and I would mention, the intention. It's not necessary for the priest to recite this prayer, uh, but it's, it's a good reminder that we offer the Mass with the intention of offering it in the way that the Church wants us to offer it. Now, if you notice here in my office, if you look over into this corner, if I can have my worthy cameraman focus in on this sink, why do we have this sink here? And the reason is that the priest, like everyone else, should make sure that his hands are clean before he is going to begin Mass. So if my hands are not clean, I would wash my hands. Right now we have the cruets here because we're using this as our primary sacristy. We're not using the one behind the altar area. So this is where uh, I'm still getting ready for our Mass in the chapel. So I would wash my hands and I would usually take off my watch. Some priests, they keep their fancy watches on, but I just believe that when I elevate the host and the chalice, that the focus should be our Lord and not the kind of watch that I'm wearing. But anyways, for now, I'm gonna leave my watch on, okay? So, when the priest gets ready, he has to put on various articles of clothing. And what is the tradition for these articles of clothing? Well, part of it is from the Old Testament times. If you read the Old Testament, the priest of Old Te Testament times had to put on special clothing to remind themselves that what they are about to do in offering the animal sacrifices is something otherworldly. So it was a special occasion, but it was also to honor God. So they had beautiful vestments, beautiful ornate things that they would wear to come close to God. And they would honor God in this fashion. And people who would see them dressed in this fashion, they would understand that the priest is, is undertaking some, some special sacrifice or some act of worship. And it's also a reminder to the laity that they too should make an effort to dress well for Mass. Now when the priest gets ready for Mass, sometimes people come in and talk to me about various things, and I try to be very accommodating, but the reality is that if you can, try not to disturb the priest as he's getting ready for Mass, as he's getting vested. The other area where we get these vestments from is from the scriptures, St. Paul. I believe it's in chapter 6 of his letter to the Ephesians, but I'm not sure, uh, where he says, put on the helmet of God and, and various passages like that. So the first article that the priest would put on is called an amice. 
Now, for all these religious garments that the priest is going to put on, yeah, uh, they they are significant in regards that they um, are used for the celebration of mass, and they should only be used for that. And some of these will have a cross on it. It's not very clear here, but you can see the cross on it. And the other thing is that when the priest puts each of these garments on, he will kiss it first. And he's supposed to recite a prayer as he puts on each garment. Now, not all priests wear the amis, but I do, and traditionally all priests used to wear the amis. In fact, having to wash your hands before Mass was mandatory previously. Now it's not mandatory, it's just something that's strongly encouraged. So anyways, I, I would kiss the garment, ideally at the cross, and because it pertains to the helmet of salvation, the priest is supposed to touch the amis to his head before he slides it down around his neck. Now this garment has a very practical purpose because when I sweat during the Mass, and I do because I have many layers of clothing on, it's much easier to clean this one garment than all the other vestments that I would be putting on. And I usually tuck it in underneath my collar in this fashion. And the prayer that I say is the following, Place, O Lord, on my head the helmet of salvation so that I may resist the assaults of the devil. Place, O Lord, on my head the helmet of salvation so that I may resist the assaults of the devil. Yes. Okay. And the next article of clothing that I put on is called an elb. So the elb is Latin for white. And sometimes some priests, their elbs are a little bit creamy color. So it's not always pure white, but it's supposed to be a whitish color symbolizing purity and it's a reminder to the priest and to everyone else that when we approach the sacred mysteries of the mass that our souls need to be purified through the sacrament of confession now some elves are rather plain so here's a rather plain one it's not decorative at all this one is a little bit more decorative i don't know if you can see so this is an, a nicer one i would wear this on sundays uh, often for weekdays i would just wear the plain one okay there are some elves that are have a lot of lace and and are very beautiful and ornate and i, I do have some like that and i i mentioned that we are planning to do the mass in honor of our lady of fatima so Maybe I'll wear one of my fancier albs for that special occasion. You'll get to see a fancier alb. Anyways, when the priest puts on the alb, as I mentioned, he kisses each article of clothing that he puts on. And as he puts it on, he's supposed to recite the accompanying prayer. So the prayer for the alb is, Purify me, O Lord, and cleanse my heart that purified in the blood of the Lamb, I may deserve everlasting joys. You can look up these prayers online. Sometimes they vary somewhat, just like the St. Michael prayer. There's many different versions of it. So some albs go over your head the way mine does. Some priest is more like a, a Velcro strap and they just kind of go into it. But just this is just the style that I have. It was a gift to me actually from from a parishioner in one of my former parishes. After that comes the cincture. So often priests will tie them in a special knot like this. It just, it makes it easier for storage, but it's also very easy to make it come apart. So this is just, I guess they call it a slip knot. So you just pull it apart. So this is the cincture or a little belt to kind of keep things in place, including the, uh, the stool. So once again, the priest kisses it, and the prayer that he recites is, Gird me, O Lord, with the cincture of purity, and suppress in my members every inordinate desire that the virtues of continence and chastity may ever abide with me. So, puts on the cincture, and after that, the priest is going to put on the stole and the chasuble. So, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the different color vestments. I can't just say, oh, I feel like wearing red today. That's not how it works. So 
right here and in most sacristies you will find something that's called an ordo i can't remember what those ordo it's the liturgical calendar for 2019 and 2020. And basically this ordo tells us each day what feast it is, when Easter is, and all these things. So keep in mind that our liturgical year begins in Advent. So here it will indicate to me what feast it is, whether it's a memorial or an optional memorial. So during Easter season, ideally we shouldn't be doing optional memorials. As you know, I like to do the optional memorials to honor the saints during ordinary time. So anyways, I have to check which feast it is and the corresponding vestment. So the vestments are symbolic. So as you know, purple, we use purple during Advent and Lent. So purple is a, is a symbol of mourning, of sadness, okay? We have the violet that we would have on Rose Sunday, which is a symbol of hope. During ordinary time, we have green. And green is a symbol of life. So it's spring now, the grass is getting greener, the trees are, are budding, and, and soon it's going to be green. So it's a symbol of life. So God is life-giving. White is, white is a symbol of joy. It's also a symbol of purity. So usually on feast days of the saints, saints who were not martyrs, we would wear white. Also on great celebrations or big celebrations like Christmas, Easter, we would also wear white. Sometimes on special feasts like Christmas and Easter, we could wear gold or something that is more ornate. And a lot of vestments, such as this one, this one was actually made by a parishioner and given to me. If you notice, there is this symbol here, okay? And somebody asked me, what, what is the symbol of this? So the X and the P. It's really uh, Greek, and in Greek it's the chi rho, which is the first two letters in the word Christ. So it's a symbol that has been used for Christ. We also have the alpha and the omega here, so the beginning and the end. But this shape here represents the cross, or the crucifixion of our Lord. So it's intended to remind us of that. And traditionally, many vestments had this kind of design on it, as well as sometimes very ornate um, a back design on it. So as I mentioned, white is a symbol of joy, purity, celebration. Red, we would wear on certain feasts that we, when we celebrate a martyr. So someone who shed their blood for the faith. So red symbolizes blood, but red also symbolizes love. So on Valentine's Day, people give red hearts or red roses to their loved ones. Okay, so red also symbolizes love. On Pentecost, for example, when the Holy Spirit came down, we wear red. There is one other vestment that I would like to show you, and that is black vestments, which often you will not see especially nowadays. Very few priests have black, but traditionally for a funeral, all priests would wear black. Today, or in the modern church, the priest has an option of wearing black, violet or purple, or white. And unfortunately, many priests wear white, symbolizing that the deceased is a saint. And people talk about celebrating the person's life. And yes, we honor the person, we honor their life, but the reality is we should mourn for them. So black especially is a sign of mourning. Traditionally, people attending funerals would all wear dark colors or especially black colors, symbolizing sorrow and mourning, similar to ashes. So if you recall when David was mourning his sins, he put ashes on himself. So, so black is used for, for funerals. We also use black on the Feast of All Souls. So after I put on my cincture, I would put on the stole. And the stole, once again, the priest kisses it. Often the stoles would have a cross right at the, the center there. And traditionally, priests would cross their stoles in this fashion, except if you are a bishop, okay? And part of, part of crossing it in this fashion was to remind you 
of the cross, but it symbolizes the yoke of Christ, that a priest is yoked under Christ and it works with Christ in union with Christ to bring the sacraments, the life-giving sacraments to the faithful people. So the prayer that I, uh, so nowadays priests just have their stools straight the way that bishops do. So some priests even now will cross their stools, but sometimes it kind of crosses up high and it, it kind of gets kind of awkward. So most of the time I just have it straight down also. And the prayer that I say for the stool is, Restore to me, O Lord, the stole of immortality, which I lost through the sin of my first parents. And although I am unworthy to receive your sacred mysteries, may I be found worthy of everlasting joys. Amen. So the stole. And on top of the stole, we place the chasuble. Okay, now the chasuble is very significant. I don't know what the word chasuble literally means, but the chasuble symbolizes charity. And it's the last thing that the priest puts on. It's a reminder that everything needs to be covered with charity. So once again, the priest would kiss it and put it on. And the prayer that he recites okay, is... Uh, I think I have it on backwards. But the prayer that he recites is, um, O Lord, who said, my yoke is sweet and my burden is light, grant that I may so carry it as to win your favor and grace. And once I'm all dressed up and ready to go, I still don't leave. Then I look at the crucifix. So in every sacristy, there should be a crucifix. Cameraman, can you please focus on the crucifix over here? Okay, there's a lot of light coming in right now, so I'm not sure if you can see it. But the priest is supposed to look at the crucifix and ideally say a prayer before starting Mass, and we would also bow to the crucifix, and then we would process out. So I usually just say Hail Mary, but I look at the crucifix to remind myself that when I'm going to celebrate Mass, I am joining Christ in offering Christ crucified, to our Heavenly Father, which is what the Mass is all about. So this is how the priest prepares himself for Mass. And it's a good uh, reminder to all of us that we all need to prepare ourselves for Mass. So how do you prepare yourself for Mass? So Mass is the most important thing in our lives. So dressing up for it, making sure that our hands are clean, making sure that our souls are purified, saying some prayers before Mass. All of these things can help us to gain more out of our participation in the Mass, whether we are actually attending or just watching it on TV.